Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we're doing another topic on faults, which is wrench or tear faults. You'll hear them called both. Uh, wrench is generally more common. But to start off, I've just got this uh, rectangular prism here that's going to become a block diagram. So we're going to just start by drawing a little fault line right there, right across the top. It should be close to parallel with these two lines that mark the top the top plane here. Obviously my drawing's not perfect, so it's not perfect either, but we'll make do with what we can. And then down here you're gonna do the same. Just draw it parallel so that it looks natural. It looks like we've got two split cubes sort of that have just been mashed together. Uh, little note here, this is important. This plane right here, this face of the rectangular prism, is called the outcrop. And you can always define it by it being the surface on which the fault line runs vertically or close to vertically. If it's a normal or reverse fault, you'll see it running more like uh, that at an angle. But it should be closer to being vertical, even if it is slightly dipping. Okay, so now we're just going to draw in some, uh, some strata here, and what's interesting about wrench and tear faults is they actually are a type of strike-slip fault. So what you'll see here is that there's motion that causes these two, the top pieces, to be farther apart. So we're going to have two completely different sets of strata showing on these two uh, separate planes here. So instead of labeling them with letters, I'm going to give them a bit of visual flair. Maybe mark this one by dots. Give this one some stripes. And maybe just fill in this one. And then over here we'll do just little springy patterns. Over here do some cross hatching. And over here just lines. Right, so we, we see displacement such that these two contain completely different beds of strata at their surfaces. Now, if this one was shifted this way, upwards, then maybe this one this springy pattern is directly below here. We don't know, so it, it could be shifted either way, but we know that since there is no vertical displacement at the surface, and since the beds showing at the top, or the types of rock showing at the top rather, are different, this must be a strike slip fault. And then down here we're just gonna draw little continuations of them. They just poke through here. just like that so that they go on the side and then maybe there's a few more down here that we don't really care about that you would see later on up here so all that's left to draw is the outcrop and what's interesting about wrench or tear faults is that the outcrop appears as if it's undergone the effects of a normal fault or a reverse fault in some cases a dip slip fault So then with these patterns, once again, we're just going to extend them across this surface. So there's our first layer, with the little shaded in. And then this one comes across, give some nice stripes. And then this one comes across. And then there's one final one down here we're not concerned about. And like I said, the interesting about the thing about this kind of fault is that the outcrop should appear as if it's undergone a normal fault transformation. Now, since in this case, this is a lateral fault, this line is 
fault line as it comes down the outcrop is completely vertical. So really, we just say normal fault just because um, it doesn't, since there's no technical hanging or foot wall, we really should properly say just a dip slip fault. But you should see what looks like some vertical um, displacement here. Um, so we'll just draw it such that we'll say this one comes down like that. This striped one is now down here. And this shaded one is right there. And then we've got a completely new layer that we don't see here. Maybe that's our our dashed line one because it could have come before it. But yeah, that's what a wrench or a tear fault is. If you ever see something that looks like this, it's tempting to say, well, that's that's either a normal or a reverse fault because just looking at the outcrop here, it appears as though some of them have been shifted, the strata on this side have been shifted upwards or the strata on this side have been shifted downwards. But when you take a look at the whole picture, you can clearly see that there has been some lateral displacement, which means it is a strike slip fault, and specifically it's a wrench or a tear fault. So if you want a brief explanation as to why this happens, it's pretty simple. You have to think about these two uh, sections that we create due to the fault line here as completely different pieces of earth, right? So simply put, this one originally started off farther down if you think of it on a 3D, in a three-dimensional world, this one started off closer to us than it now is. And the reason for that is, well, these strata have all been shifted down relative to these. And since, if we look at it in, this, in a 3D perspective once again, as we get closer to ourselves, um, the strata get lower and lower, right? So when this... so this one started off farther back and eventually they got to a point where they were where for example this one was down here so it would have been drawn across like so however since a strike slip fault is here this one was forced back relative to where we are and now we see that it is comp it is aligned with this one and that's what gives us the wrench tear fault diagram that we see here hopefully that made sense Hopefully it was informative, otherwise hopefully good review. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.